Hi, this is Debbie Dashinger, and welcome to Dare to Dream. Today's going to be a great show because in a little bit, I have Sarah Hudson on the program, and we're going to be talking about success in the matrix. Sarah Teresa Hudson is an American pop singer, songwriter, creator of the club pop music project, Ultraviolet Sound, and has written most of the number one songs you listen to today. Dare to Dream is listed in Welp Magazine as one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to today. We recently won the COVR Best Radio and Podcast Award and have been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards and for a Webby Award. Thank you so much for being on this journey. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. They do beautiful energy work out into the world. If you would like to become a facilitator or take one of their classes, go to Dr. Dane here, H E E R dot com or accessconsciousness.com. I'm Debbie Dashinger, and I teach speakers and spiritual messengers and coaches the highly effective steps to write an excellent book. I'm a book writing coach. I also take your book to a guaranteed international bestseller. And the third leg is that I show you how to be interviewed on radio and podcasts and get massive results. Right now, I am rolling out the new five-day podcast interview challenge. And if you'd like to join or read more about it, go to debbied.net slash challenge. It's D-E-B-B-I-D.net slash challenge. When you join, what you'll get is to learn how to say yes, how to say yes to doing this, and then what to present to a podcast so you get a yes to be interviewed on the show. Then what do you do once you're on the show? I coach you on how to be an exquisite interview, how to find the right shows for your expertise, how to have your speaking and talking points prepared and align with the right shows for hundreds of bookings. Engage with media influencers. You can be introduced to thousands of new clients, followers, sell books, fill workshops, increase your email database. The five-day podcast challenge is running December 5th through the 9th, so you need to join right away. Learn how to do it right and deliver a great interview for massive results. Debbie D, -D D-E-B-B-I-D dot net slash challenge. Today, I am speaking with Sarah Hudson. She is a Grammy-nominated multi-platinum songwriter, artist, star, star seed, and muse located in Los Angeles. Sarah co-wrote a portion of the Dua Lipa album, Future Nostalgia, including singles, levitating, and physical. This year, she's written most of the acclaimed songs of the year, including the top five Dua Lipa and Megan Thee Stallion single, Sweet as Pie, Noah Cyrus's single, Mr. Percocet, Maniskin single, The Loneliness, Elenium single, Worst Day, and another single, Bad Omens, Leah Kate singles, and more and even more. Sarah has written the Diamond Certified number one song by Katy Perry, Swish Swish, and also the top five hit, Black Widow. Ha. <laughs> So um, my screen is going nuts here. Welcome to Mercury Retrograde. So it's quite a bio, as you can tell. She is in it to win it, this girl. She's also a tarot reader, an intuitive, a public speaker. And Sarah offers a series of workshops, including this year's Manifesting in the Matrix at the Conscious Life Expo in Los Angeles, and has an upcoming workshop called Success in the matrix. If you want to learn more, go to Instagram and her handle is at Sarah Hudson XX. And I will have in the show notes, her Instagram, her bio, also the Conscious Life Expo URL. So you can go live or live stream. And with that, I welcome Sarah Hudson to Dare to Dream. It is so great to have you. Thanks for being here. Hi. I'm so happy to be here, Debbie. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it's great. So you're in the studio today recording. Can I ask what you're recording? 
I am. I'm just um, doing a writing session today, just writing songs with, you know, some songwriters that I work with a lot. Um, yeah, so I stepped out. I'm in my car, which is also like my other office. <laughs> I do so many things in my car. So I came I in here for some privacy. I was sitting yesterday while I was researching you which was very joyful because I come from a very strong musical background. My family is in music. I'm a singer. I love Amazing. music. Frequency is everything. It's it, it is so healing. And I was just amazed at what you've amassed at such a young age. And I kept wondering what causes you to write? Like, what's the process for you? that something gets birthed out of you, that you know the music, you know the lyrics, what has to happen inside of you for all of that to occur? Um, you know, for me, it, the process of writing is different every time, depending on what room I am in, the people I'm with. But I have to say my ultimate favorite and, and when I feel most connected is when I'm in the room with people that I just am on the same frequency with, and we really connect energetically and it's a safe space to, you know, cause writing a song, it's like you, a million just ideas come out until you land on the one that everybody resonates with, you know? So having the energy in the room be, feel like a safe space, an open space, the energy is just flowing and you're able to get it all out before you really connect to what I call, you know, the God space mm. and become like a channel. I mean, I, I have to say, I really call myself a channel because I don't remember a lot after I come up with ideas and it comes out. I, I don't remember. I, sometimes I listen to songs I've written. I'm like, I have no idea how I did that. I don't know. Like, and I, and I think that it takes a lot to tap into that space, but when you're in the right environment, it's just, it's effortless. And it's like the best feeling ever, you know? And what about Dark Horse? So, was that kind of an anthem song for you? Was that you really expressing something that was important to you and about you? Um, Dark Horse, you know, was really Katy Perry and I, coming up with a concept that, you know, is about just being a strong woman and an empowered woman. And, and yeah, it's, it really was a song that changed my life at that time. It really opened so many doors for me. And, you know, at the time I was filing for bankruptcy and I reversed my bankruptcy because of that song. And I moved out of a studio. I was living in a one room studio and I moved out and was able to get an apartment and able to get into situations with, you know, other amaz amazing artists and writers. And, and that song, it's weird. It became, I, I really related to it a lot after the fact, like, I feel like I, I am a dark horse in the sense mm -hmm. of like coming up from, you know, sort of, I don't know, like an underground, like left of center space. So that song for many reasons is just so close to my heart. Yeah, it's an amazing story coming from living in a one room recording studio, filing for bankruptcy, yes. and becoming an entrepreneur and a millionaire. And what's yes. beautiful about the story is what's underneath it is you decided to create your own reality through manifestation, through spirituality, yes. through magic. And now yes. you work with the biggest stars of our time. Yeah. So how did you align with that version of you into creation? Right. Um, you know, I've always my entire life been a seeker, a searcher. I've always been interested in, you know, I went to Catholic school my whole life, but I, I never really resonated with that. Um, I always was like, what else? What else? Like learning about Buddha and Hinduism and, you know, all different kinds of faith and always had like mediums and psychics and, you know, healers. And I was always 
curious and searching and I learned you know tarot at a young younger age and I just kind of was always seeking and then you know I what really changed the game for me and I I talk about this a lot is the book um the magic by Rhonda Byrne and it's all about gratitude and you know I was in the lowest probably the lowest place I've ever been as far as like I said filing for bankruptcy I was living in a place no shower no kitchen it was just like a box you know um splitting subway sandwiches for the week like it was just like a and 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 I had ended you know I had been signed as an artist. I had been in a band. I had been through this whole journey already and nothing was clicking. And it was a really difficult spiritual and emotional time for me. And I I read that book and it's all about gratitude. And I started doing that book, the exercises in that book, like to the T every single day. It's like, you write down what you're grateful for and why, and you, you really say it and you really feel it. And and I was like committed to that. And I, ha- I have to say like, it was for 30 days. And after those 30 days, I've, my world was just like, shoo, like flipped around because my vibration was, my frequency was high. My vibration was, was buzzing. And I was bringing in all of this good energy and good opportunity. And, and you know, since then, I just started really diving into it all and, and manifestation and, you know, all of that. And I, and it, it just, I apply it in my life in every area. So, but that was a moment that was a big, um, turning point. Huge turning point. Yeah. That's, that's about as polar as you can get, uh, and a real testimony to magic. So today, how imperative are your spiritual practices? So here you are, you've arrived, you're known, you're successful. Are you still practicing? Has it changed? And how important is it to your creative process and to the workshops you deliver? You know, it's just become a a part of my everyday life. Um, Just, uh, you know, I'm always reading, I'm always meditating, I'm exercising, I'm eating healthy, I'm staying in that mindset as much as I can. And, you know, it definitely like once you, once you're in that routine and it, and you're vibrating high and you feel good and you kind of drop off, I don't have to meditate today. I don't have to do that today. You know, it happens to me all the time. And then I, and then I get hit with like some kind of feeling or an ego moment or a sadness or something. And I'm, it's just a reminder to me, like, girl, get back on that train, you know? And, and it's, it's major for me with my creativity. Like it's one in the same for me with my creativity, because I just really believe that amazing art and creations come when you are not in your ego and when you are just fully connected and it just it it's a practice like anything else to stay in that space you know um but for me yeah I mean I'm bringing you know sage everywhere and I'm pulling cards and I'm like lowering the lights and I'm 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 creating my environment pretty much everywhere I go, especially for work, you know? Um, But yeah, it's, it goes hand in hand for me. I know you talk about how we can unlock our ultimate potential. Yeah. And you also talk about that we live in a system that tries to render us powerless. Yes. I think being alive right now is a testament to that. Yes. A hundred percent. So what are some secrets, if you will, that you can give us as recommendations so we can unlock our potential? You know, my, in the, in the workshop that I wrote for last year's uh, Conscious Life Expo was manifesting in the matrix. So what I mean by the matrix is, you know, it's a trendy term, but what I mean by it is just in the system we're all in, you know, we all we're in a system. We, we have to work a job and we have to pay our bills and we have to, you know, 
survive. And I think it's really easy to get like overwhelmed and bogged down by that. Um, and that's for me where, you know, manifesting comes into play. And for me, it's like, look, there's so many steps to this, but for me, the main thing when you're manifesting or when you want something, or you even want to feel a certain way is, you know, you have to envision it. You have to, whatever it is. I mean, I I don't know, let's say I want to go to Greece and that's what I'm manifesting. I, I, you have to envision it and feel it in your body. It's like almost like a meditation practice, a prayer practice of like, I put, put yourself there, put yourself in those shoes. You're in Greece or you're getting that, you know, whatever you're meeting that friend or lover, or whatever you're, you want to bring into your life. You really feel it and bring it into your vibration because, you know, the law of attraction, which I'm sure everybody listening knows is what you put out, you get back, you know, ask and it is given. It's like when you put out that frequency, it returns to you. So, so for me, it's like, okay, like I, I, I want to manifest this in my life. I have to go there energetically, you know, and, and then I have to have faith that, that I can achieve that, that I can, can get there and, 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 you know, do my practices, quiet my mind, meditate, you know, take care of my, my temple. And just, I mean, I could go on forever and ever, but really I would say feeling it and becoming it is just this, the secret Mm. to me, the key. What about creating dreams? This is dare to dream. Is that very much like what you're describing or is there spiritual steps to achieving one's dream? And if so, what are the spiritual dream steps? It's a good question. I mean, yes, definitely. I think, you know, I mean, I, I have big dreams, have had big dreams, achieved a lot of what I have dreamed and not, you know, and I think, I think what I've learned is to just do what you're good at and keep doing it and keep having that faith and that confidence and moving forward and, and almost surrendering to the divine, to the divine plan. Surrender is such a theme for me because when I look back on my life, the times I was just so holding on so hard and wanting to control it so hard and so upset if it didn't go my way and all of it, those are the times I didn't achieve the dream. But the times I just released and I was grateful to be alive and I was grateful to wake up every day, pet my dogs, the littlest things, just grateful. And I kind of just I just like let spirit and let the universe just guide me, you know? And, and when I think about those times, that's when everything that I've achieved kind of came into my world. It's that same thing. You're meeting that vibration. It's almost like the universe, whatever you want to call it, God, spirit. It's just, it like hears you when you're in that space and it responds to you, you know? I think that is so huge what you just said. It's so prevalent in my life right now. I am working on that. And right. same, 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 right? I'm listening yes. to the Audible by David Hawkins called Letting oh, Go. Amazing. Oh, and I'm amazing. literally taking that on as my journey. And so interesting that you're saying all this. I was just interviewed earlier this week on someone's podcast. And because of her line of questioning, and it was really pretty genius, I saw at every reference point that was important in my life, what preceded it was surrender. And I want to call myself out and say, I'm not typically or haven't been previously very good at this. And here I'm working on it. 
And she's asking me these questions. I'm like, oh yeah, before that happened, I surrendered. Oh, and before my career changed, that happened and I surrendered. And and I suddenly, I was so moved while I was sharing because I was able to get the gift in return. You know, Deb, every time you let go, good things happen. And I know yeah. it's it's a struggle. My claws are in. I want to control oh my it. God. I know it's best. It's it's so yeah. deep. And then yeah. when I let go, that's like the greatest, most unexpected things occur. I know. I mean, the reason I know this is because I struggle with it. <laughs> and every time I do it, like exactly what you just said, I'm like, oh that happened. That's when that happened. That's when that happened. I, I want to hold on so tight, so much in my life, but that's my practice. I have to say every single day, all day long is surrender. And especially in creative, creative scenarios and creativity. Mm -hmm. And, you know, cause I, I collaborate, I, I collaborate with other people and it's like, they have ideas too. And I might, it might not be what's resonating with me, but if I surrender for the greater good of this outcome of this song mm -hmm. or this piece of art, I could make something I wouldn't even fathom making, you know? So it's such a, it's such a, an important, an important piece that surrender I have on my arm surrender Dorothy oh, oh. <laughs> looking every day at this and I I it's funny like in a meditation that came to me like in a meditation because I thought you know the Wizard of Oz is so incredible and I think has so many incredible deeper meanings and I thought of that and I was like what if the witch symbolized like Dorothy's fear and dark side and she's trying to control the situation so much I got to get to Oz I got to get home I got you know and and that that writing in the sky it's like surrender to mm. it all to to the journey to the to the hard parts the good parts I don't know it was a really big moment for me that <sighs> meditation that's brilliant well maybe your next song will be about surrender yes uh, yes it's definitely a theme an everyday theme in my life. And I really appreciate you being transparent about that. It's difficult at times. Yeah, and of course. Even the piece that's is also very, I mean, there's you and you, there's you and you, you and God, goddess, all of that, you and life. Yes. And then really good point. You brought up the collaboration. Then you have another being enter the room with their own opinions, yeah. their own yeah. direction their own downloads. And here you are in this creative space. And so can you tell a story about a time when surrender was very difficult for you and you mm. managed to let go and something mm. magnificent was born out of that? I mean, honestly, it's, I think I was in a band, Ultraviolet Sound with my now husband, um, we were in a band together for six years and, and I, this was my life and my, you know, eat, sleep and breathe this band. We just, I was so passionate about it and I, I was holding on so tight and I, I didn't want to let go of the possibility for us to become the biggest band in the world. And, you know, I was just so um holding on so tight and trying to control every little situation about it and my now husband you know after six years of being in this band he came to me and he was like you know what I'm I don't want to do this band anymore I want to do my own thing my own project and I don't want to do it anymore and I was like so devastated I you know I was just devastated I was like oh my God, well, like, what am I going to do? You know? And then, uh, but I, but I understood on a level because we, we had gotten to a point of, like I said earlier, we were living in a studio. We were so broke. It was really difficult to live. Mm. But when I really let go and started just 
you know, the universe guided me. It's like, I, I had no idea what I was going to do, but the universe brought in a, uh, some artists into my life, some, some other songwriters. I started writing songs. I, it kind of just became something I was doing anyway. And long story short, I'm here. Like I surrendered to the process I never thought in my life I would be a songwriter. I mean, I knew I wrote songs, but I was like, oh, I'm a, I'm a singer. I'm, I'm going to be famous. I'm going to be in a band. I'm going to, you know, and, and I just, I surrendered to it and I'm, I, everything started pouring in, you know? Mm -hmm. So that was, that was pretty major for me. Who's your favorite collaborator? Oh, that's a good question. You know, a I have been blessed to have so many incredible um, people that I've worked with, but I do have one uh, songwriter in particular, his name is Coffee, Hi Coffee. And he, him and I really just, we really go there together. And we have written, you know, we wrote songs, the songs for Dua Lipa, and we've written, you know, a bunch of other songs together. And we just have a thing. and. We're both very, very similar spiritually. And we talk about God and we talk about, you know, throwing it all away and letting it just come, being channels and beaming and, you know, getting beams. And we're just on that sort of frequency together. So writing songs with him is just like, it's like just effortless and spiritual. Mm, beautiful which is my favorite effortless and spiritual hi coffee <laughs> thanks for your good work I like that hi coffee <laughs> <laughs> I'm super interested about the tarot as well as you being a yeah. star seed of course you are and let's start with tarot because although I've known of tarot since I'm a little kid I was same like you like into all this stuff mm -hmm. Yeah. And my real appreciation though has recently been turned on because I did some work with somebody and while I was working with her as a healer, she was, you know, as a healer, what she could tell me and see right. in my life and the, like literally knowing people and everything that was going on with them and situations, I didn't have to say a thing. And I sat back and thought, this is outstanding that cards. Yeah can speak to somebody like this. How is it mm -hmm. for you with the tarot? Yeah, it's the same for me. I mean, I, I learned, I always were, was drawn to tarot and Oracle cards. And I just always thought it was so cool. And, you know, anyone who's in LA, the psychic eye bookstore, that was like where I would go after school. I mean, I was just like, oh, I want to learn all of this, you know? Um, and I didn't really start learning, learning until, I don't know, maybe it was, I don't even know, like 10 years ago, maybe eight years. I can't, I can't remember, but from an amazing teacher, her name is Naha and she has a school, um, downtown LA called 22 teachings. And she has been just a spiritual advisor for me for many years. And she's incredible. And she was doing tarot courses so I was like you know what it's time I'm gonna learn I'm really gonna learn so I did the courses um you know I read the books I really learned about it all and what I learned is you know they're just a tool they're just a spiritual tool for intuitives to tap in I mean there's so many meanings in one little card everything from you know this the 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 number of it to the name of it to where the moon is where the little lizard is what the colors are I mean you know there's so many meanings and if you know those meanings it kind of makes sense when you're reading for somebody I don't know it like all ties in together but really it's just a tool sometimes I'll do a reading for somebody and like I'm not even really focusing on those details of the cards I'm just getting messages like I'm just sort of getting downloads like I'll see one card and go oh my god this is this is what I feel like the message is for you and I I don't know they're a tool for me to connect and 
I started out as, I mean, for fun, I still just do it for fun, but it kind of became like, you know, everyone was like, whoa, this, you're actually telling me stuff that has happened or that I'm feeling, or I don't know, it, it became, it became more of a thing than I even had intended, but but I always am every, mostly every day, every week I'm pulling cards and I just kind of, you know, take the messages that come in. Beautiful. Absolutely. I love, I love that you're using it as divination for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. It's not so much. It's funny. Some people are like really weirded out by the tarot or like, they're like, I'm scared. I don't want to get the devil card or death (laughs) or whatever. And it's like, it's like, it doesn't, it doesn't mean those things. It's not like, it, it has not nothing literal. to do with any of that. Right. Yeah, it's not literal. But um, I just love it. I mean, it's a very, very big passion of mine. And you call yourself a star seed. Do you know what your star seed origins are? You know, I have been told by two mediums, one who I see, talk to, a lot and who is another spiritual just advisor and blessing to me that I have Pleiadian Mm. uh you know DNA or or an origin and I don't I I have to say it just like completely resonated with me Mm. right away um I do feel something he said which I I thought was really cool was that I was sent here to understand earth and understand how this planet operates and to bring light into this planet and then take it back to my people and kind of explain how earth works. I don't know. Like, and when he said that, I was like, God, I do feel that. I mean, I do feel Mm. I do feel that in a way, I I don't know, in my sort of soul. I don't know. Is it real? Is it true? I don't know. But I, but I feel it, you know? Totally. Yeah. I've had a galactic reading and it was so much better than getting my, you know, DNA tested by ancestry.com. I mean, it was way more fulfilling and spoke way more to who I am today, understanding from these different incarnations what I was doing, why I was there. And it completely speaks to the gifts I have today, the way I operate, and maybe why sometimes it's so hard to be on this planet, you know? Yeah. 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 I mean, that's why it would be. Yeah. That's why when he said that, I was like, God, that makes sense more than, more than anything. Mm. So I just feel, you know, and I just feel like I, have a special sort of gift bringing light and joy into the world and you know to me that's sort of what a star seed is to me just a a light being you know Mm -hmm. um yeah you know I resonate with a lot of Pleiadian sort of you know bringers of the dawn um is one of my all-time favorite books ever um, I listen to it. Honestly, I listen to it to go to sleep. Like it just resonates with my soul. So I'm like, maybe it's true. Um, but you know, yeah, I don't know. That's kind of what I mean by star seed. Yes. I resonate too so much with what you're saying. And, um, that's beautiful. I think it's nice to have a place to start. And so here you are, you are a humanoid, you are an earthling and you are going to yes. experience, right? So yes. I- we have all sorts you, of. You can see me okay with these lights, sort of. Yeah, I mean, a dappling of light. To block we'll them, <laughs> I see. Yeah, I see. I do see it, but it's not on your face right now. So, and folks who are listening okay, to the podcast, good, by okay. the way, if you want to see me and Sarah, and you want to see the beautiful lighting on her, et cetera, go to youtube.com slash Debbie uh-huh. Blashinger. So you can also not just listen to this, but watch us as well. It's well worth it. What do you do mm-hmm. here on your lifetime, Sarah, when you have fear, when you have disappointments, how do you deal with it? How do you get through it? How do you process it? How do you show up for yourself? 
That's a really good question because, you know, I, one of my biggest struggles in my life has been anxiety and, you know, fear of death. You know, I had a kidney removed when I was three and it was like emergency surgery. And I think, you know, I, I was very close to not making it. And it was sort of this big moment that I think sort of stayed energetically in my body. So I had throughout my life, a lot of fear of death, anxiety, these sort of like it, feelings and thoughts that, you know, were really hard to navigate for a lot of like my teenage years and all throughout my life in and out of life. And I think the one thing that has just helped me and changed that for me is meditation. I mean, you know, and, and, and a lot of writing, like a lot of journaling. I I'm big on that. Like whenever I'm, my mind is just going, 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 and I'm feeling that anxiety. I just write it out. I just free write, like just write, write, write. And then, and meditating, it's just quieting my mind, like, and remembering that this life is like two seconds. It's just like so quick and that it's like an experience. Like I, whenever I kind of, whenever something feels so serious and scary, I'm like, I zoom out and I'm just like, this is just like an adventure. Just I ride it out and enjoy this. Like it doesn't have to be that serious, you know? Mm. And obviously I know a lot of people have so you know, uh, incredible hardships. And I'm not saying life is easy by any means, but I think just zooming out and remembering that our time here is very, very short and precious. And, you know, I'm, I'm 42, I'm going to be 43 in March. And, you know, by any, I know that's not like old, but I've lived 40 something years of my life. And I'm, and I'm kind of like, whoa, what? I feel like I'm 18. I can't believe that this is, I'm already here, you know? And, and so I want to just enjoy the rest of my life. I want to really like be in the moment and, and not let fear and take over me. Cause I feel like a lot of that is induced by the world that we live in and by the society that we're in. And, you know, we're constantly being bombarded with fear, fear, fear. So yeah, it's, it's just a practice that it's just a practice. And I think meditating remember, helps you remember who you really are, you know? Yeah. Because here we are deep in the ascension. We are in it folks. And yes, we, we are. Read, we are. We said, hell yeah, to being here at this time. So are there ways that you recommend, especially those of us who are sensitives and empaths, who really yes. feel probably way more than what is ours and probably care more, mm -hmm. way more. <clears throat> so with yes. all that in mind, what do you recommend for thriving, navigating, creating the most abundant life within the constructs mm -hmm. of the matrix, but taking into account that we are currently ascending. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's all about like the, and I, and I feel like I've really accepted this lately, like, and more maybe in the past few years have understood that, that this planet is, you know, it's the polarity, it's dark and it's light. Like that can't, neither one can exist without the other, you know? So I think it's like, instead of just wishing everything was okay. And why aren't we in, you know, why aren't we the new earth yet? Like, why is there violence? Why is there pain? Why is there, you know, I just think that we have to accept that that is a part it's the shadow you know and and when we when we accept that that's a part of it we can stand in the light more I don't know like we can we can shine the light 
on the darkness and go, Hey, like come over here, you know, like, I don't know. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I, but something about accepting that helps me sort of navigate through it. Um, then I don't get so frustrated and fearful and anxious. Cause I'm like, you know what, this is a part of it. Like you said, I chose to incarnate during this time for whatever reason. So I have to understand where, where I am right now, you know, and, and stay in my light being in my, in my God self. Um, and I also think keeping your micro cosm, your little bubble protected is so important too. like the people you surround yourself with, you know, should really be on your frequency or within your sphere, you know, because especially as empaths, it's like, we can attract some really dark energy and, and sadness and a lot of people that need healing and they want, you know, and we, we want to heal them and not to say we should turn people away, but I think just protecting your inner circle and who you keep close can help you kind of stay in that vibration, you know? Yeah. Um, Beautiful. So speaking of those in our circles, you have quite a circle (laughs) yourself. Uh Your aunt, if I have this right, your aunt is Goldie Hawn. Your cousin is Kate. She is, yes. Close friend of your family's was Stephen Tyler. So you grew up around all these beautiful free spirits. You grew up around music. Your father was in music, your mother, et cetera. And were they also spiritual? Was spirituality nurtured in you growing up? Um, Definitely my family, you know, um, had, yes, just, from, you know, my cousins to my aunts and grandparents. And there is always a sense of, of faith. I would say more faith. Um, And they were all, and my family, you know, is most of my family are dreamers and have achieved their dreams. And that Mm -hmm. takes a, a certain amount, whether you call it spirituality or whatever you call it, it takes a certain amount of belief and faith and manifestation and, and, you know, freedom and commitment. So, yeah, I was really surrounded by that. And my dad, especially, you know, he was always, you know, bringing home crystals and, and Buddha things. And we're listening to John Lennon and Mm -hmm. teaching me about, you know, the sixties and the seventies. I mean, I definitely, he's a big, um, a big spiritual being that has been a guide to me in my life too, you know, all from a very young age. Mm. Um, so yeah, yeah. And just watching, you know, watching him, he would, uh, he's a songwriter producer and I'd go there after school and, you know, he'd be working with the likes of the Steven Tyler or Ozzy Osbourne or, you know, all these these artists and I'm watching them create and how it's happening. And that to me is a spiritual process, you know, Mm. whether you call it that or not, but, but yeah, I just kind of was always around it. Yeah. And I recently saw a photo of you from your 20 year high school reunion. And there you were. Oh my God. Yeah. Kim Kardashian and you taking all these photos together. Yeah. I went to high school with, with Kim. Yeah. How was that? Was that, I mean, well, I guess that's a multi-layered question because there's a fascination that you went to school together and also that you're both so successful. How is that walking back into your reunion? Was that a celebration? Was it a calibration? Uh, Yeah, it was, it was incredible. I mean, and you know, not just Kim, but a lot of that group of girls that I was friends with and, and went to high school with, I went to an all girls Catholic high school mm. in LA, you know, we all had our little uniforms and, and it was, it was wild nuns and the whole thing. But a lot of those girls are all very successful and, you know, really just, again, living their dreams. And it was so 
cool to go back and sort of see where we all were just these little young, you know, dreamers. Mm. And it was just the greatest. It was really cool. And Kim is such an angel, so sweet. And we just, we just had, I don't know, we had like a really, a really special bond back then as, and, and we all kind of went off and did our own things, but we're all sort of killing it. And in each area we're in. So it was really cool. How nice. How nice. And how interesting to go to a reunion with all girls. Oh my God. It really is like, and going to a high school with all girls too. It was very interesting, you know, made me a little boy crazy at Mm. one point, (laughs) but, um, and completely made me rebel against religion, um, which you know, I do attest to, you know, my spirituality and my seeking and searching because, you know, a lot of, a lot of things about, you know, Catholicism really turned me off even back then, you know? Um, so it made me look, it made me search and, you know, so, so yeah, that time it was just a really, a really like important time in, in who I am today. And I want to go back to something where we started, which is about your process of writing a song. So for me, with the band I'm with, I I write poetry. But I right. have to say, the idea of actually hearing music, I have perfect pitch, I have relative pitch, but I cannot, thus far, have not been able to hear music to set to my own words. I want to ask you okay. about your process here. And my boyfriend, my partner and I, he's my musical partner too. He did an experiment with me last night, which was pretty cosmic. And he said, Mm. I want you to forget the lyrics to these songs and pretend you're doing light language and just let whatever come through you, much like you said, like a channel. And it was the most extraordinary Mm. experience because there were melodies, haunting melodies that came out of me that I even couldn't forget this morning. Wow. I was like, wow, that was crazy. And I, I'm yeah, still- Yeah, you channel. Yeah, and I'm in this process and I still don't know how to marry things like that. Do you start mm. with lyrics first? Do you start with music first? How does that come through for you? It's different every time. I mean, I, I started off when I was little writing poetry. That's how I started with poetry. I always sang, I didn't really know how to write a song, but I was just, you know, very vocal singing and wrote poetry every day. I mean, I have books on books on books of of just poetry. Um, But now, you know, it's different every time, but now I like to sort of hear the music, kind of like what you experienced hear the music and just see like what melodies what what do I want to sing sort of over this Mm -hmm. and then I don't know then it's like the lyrics or the concept kind of comes in it's all about feeling for me you know I don't read music really Mm -hmm. I don't I play a little piano I don't I I never studied like you know classically um, so it's all feeling for me. And I, so I kind of listen to the music and the melodies and I'm like, what is, what is this making me feel? Is it, is it love? Is it sad? Is it, you know, and then the lyrics will sort of come, you know, but there have been times where I've walked in with a title or I've walked in with a word or, you know, a poem or whatever it is, and then put that to a melody. It's just, mm-hmm. it's just different every time plus it depends on who I'm in the room with and you know what their strengths are and so yeah I don't know it's I I don't have like one way really but keep going (laughs) don't stop (laughs) (laughs) thank you I won't and it's funny every time I I start I get to the studio I'm always kind of like how do we do this again you know but it just I don't know what happens. It just happens. happens. That's amazing because that is an ultimate surrender. I can imagine coming up against that, going into a studio, like ultimate, like you got to produce, you got to produce. Right. And then to have to just widen back into the field and allow what's supposed to come through to come through. Yeah. Powerful, powerful. Yeah. And I, one thing I, 
Yeah, yeah no. Please. And one thing I always sort of talk about when I talk to like, you know, up and coming writers, which I do a lot of those kind of panels and things is I say, you know, don't be so precious. Mm. Don't be so precious. Mm. It's like when we're, when we're just starting out or when we're just learning, it's like, it's that control thing, I guess. It's like, we want it to be good. We want it to be a hit song. We want it, you know, and it's like, we got to surrender that and not be so precious. And it's like, this is what we wrote today. This is what came through today. Let's see what we do tomorrow, you know? And it's like, I feel like when you're not so precious about everything, it flows easier. Mm. Yeah. It's not that significant or deep most of the time. So exactly. Yeah. Throwing things away can be wonderful and experimental. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. You are speaking February 10th through the 13th. You're going to be at the LA Conscious Life Expo. And tell us a little bit, what are you going to be doing while you're there? What can people expect and how can they find you? Uh, I'm so excited. I'm speaking on the 12th. Um, And I, this this workshop in particular, I'm calling it my, my last one and first one that I did was called Manifesting in the Matrix, all about manifesting, navigating through, you know, the matrix. Um, and this one I'm calling Success in the Matrix because I want to bring in, you know, it'll be similar as far as a lot of things about manifesting and, and those techniques, but mm-hmm. I want to bring it into your work and your your, our, our, you know, our passions and our work, because I am also planning to do another talk to songwriters and creators. So I kind of want to bring in some of that, like, like the things we were just talking about, you know, surrendering when you're creating or when you're, when you're doing your passion or, you know, connecting spiritually and allowing it to channel through you and how do you do that and how does spirituality play into you know your your job your passion um and just a little bit about you know success and being successful and like you know bringing in abundance into your life um bringing in opportunities and like yeah I, I it's kind of similar to my last one, but it, it's a little more geared to achieving your dreams and bringing it into your dreams and your passions. Perfect. Perfect segue. So this is Dare to Dream. And folks who want to see Sarah live and in person in the show notes, you will find the link to register. And don't wait. The tickets do sell out. And there are people from all over the world who come. You will want to see her in person. The link to go there will be in the show notes. And if for whatever reason you are listening to this and you're somewhere in the world where that's not possible, they live stream it. You can also sign up for that. So Sarah, what do you next dare to dream? What are your future dreams and goals? What have you not yet created that is hot on your list? Um, you know, I think I want to do more. I am planning to do more of this kind of thing. I want to speak more on, you know, my experiences and how I've used my spiritual tools and doing more of this. And I have to say what I'm manifesting is a Ted talk. I really want to do a Ted talk. So that's on my list. Bravo, brave woman. Okay. (laughs) I do think you're brave. They can find you on Instagram at Sarah Hudson XX. Anything else you want to say here at the end to the listeners? Um, Just, you know, I am grateful that to everyone that's listening, and I really would encourage you to come to the workshop at Conscious Life Expo. I'm so excited about it. I put a lot of energy into it and, you know, and I'm excited to meet everybody and, and yeah, just stay the course, you know, stay positive, surrender. Let, I, I like to say one thing I like to say, you know, spirit, 
you know, take this burden from me or take this fear from me. And then I hear spirit say, to, say back to me, I will, if you let me. And I always try to remember that, like, we got to let, we got to surrender and let the universe take its course, you know? Mm. And that, that brings me a lot of comfort and, and ease. So, so yeah, just a helpful little tip. Which is beautiful because they say spirit, the angels are always there wanting to help, but they must they be are. asked, right? And until we ask, they cannot intervene and help. So what a beautiful reminder you left us with. Thank you for yes, coming on the show. You. I really enjoyed this. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. I'm excited. Honor. And I will see you at the Conscious Life Expo. I'll be there, folks. Yes. And I end today's show with this quote from Margot Fontaine. Genius is another word for magic. And the whole point of magic is that it is inexplicable. Thank you for joining the show. Mm. Subscribe, share this leave a comment. I read everything. And next week on this number one transformation conversation, I am featuring the amazing Lee Carroll who channels cry on. So join us for sure for that show as well. Remember everything you learned here today, surrender, let go, let what is supposed to come through, come through. And if you need ask for help because it is there. Dare to dream and dare to create all your dreams into your reality.